Martin Strange Hansen is the writer director of the short film On My Mind. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. I wanted to ask you, Martin, what was on your mind while making this film? <laughs> well, um, what was on my mind? Well, one of the things was that uh, it's kind of based on some experiences I had when uh, in 2001, when my daughter was in a hospital and uh, where we eventually lost her. But um, I remember at one point I was like, uh, I need to sleep, I need to get a drink. And I went into a bar to get a double whiskey. And while I was in there, it was this weird situation of uh, two other guys having this surreal conversation about what would happen if you tie a rope around the globe. And I was just there in my very own dark moment. And I remember seeing that from outside thinking, well, sometimes you can be in so, you can be so close in proximity, but in a completely different universe. And that kind of stuck with me, that feeling. And also, I mean, the feeling of saying goodbye and, and doing that. And that's kind of some of the things that uh, inspired this film. Yeah. Was that a, a challenge for you to have to sort of dap, uh, d sorry, tap into that <laughs> well um, of, of something that was so challenging and difficult for you in your life? Um, well, I will say that I have been... This is not a new story for me anymore. It's, mm. yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's almost it's 20 years ago, right? Mm. And, uh, but one of the things that uh, I would say, if, if we say something is therapeutic about this, then there's a therapeutical thing about, or healing thing about being able to, in a way, share some of the mm. also uh, more painful insights that this experience gave me. Also, because looking back, back and commemorating her, is something actually I cherish. It's it's not like runaway uh, pain mm. in that way. So so that's why I wanted to, to have this also light tone in it. Yeah. Uh, what what do you think? Like uh, so it's obviously one of the things the film uh, deals with is loss. What's what's something you sort of found in making it? Wow, what I found in making it. Well, one of the things was that um, I mean. To take your personal story and, and try to convey it into a fiction, yeah, you need you need time. You need you need to be able to step out of yourself, because uh, that was one thing that if I told my story and like that, then it wouldn't have been as universal and it's in its tone and uh, it would be a more private thing. But it, for me, it's kind of important to uh, invite the audience in. Uh, so that was something I was really working on with this film about how to invite them in. So it's, yeah, so it actually feels more like something that everyone can experience in a way. Uh, mm. One of the, the, uh, one of the uh, responses I've had is that this is a thing, this is a film about the corona, isn't it? Yeah, like, I mean, we all mm. had that experience last year. We couldn't say goodbye to our loved ones. We couldn't, we were isolated and all that. So, uh, yeah. Yes, that is, that, that's, that's really interesting. What's something, uh, man, that like, you found particularly challenging in sort of telling this story or, um, or, 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 or making this film? Right. I mean, there is, of course, there's, this, there's a scene, a kind of scene that I hadn't done before. I hadn't done a real, should we say, proper death scene where you feel death in a way that you feel it when you are in a room with someone dying. Mm -hmm. And that was something I wanted to try to, to get in, uh, get, that, get that feeling across. Uh, so that's why I'm tr trying to make this very private space around the main character. Mm -hmm. And when I, it, it's kind of a spoiler to say, but when uh, the uh, life support is turned off, you feel it physically in your body while you see it. Like yeah. all you, you yourself almost uh, lack breath. And that was kind of, I would say the hardest part to getting that, that feeling right, I think, even though we've done it quite simply. Mm. I think something you sort of touched on earlier too is like the tone of the film is quite interesting. It's obviously like the, there's a lot of uh, sadness. There's a lot of um, sort of heavy themes, but there are like real moments of levity 
and so, some really uplifting moments within the film too. Uh, how do you approach balancing all those different tones? Well, I, well, one of the things is that I often use humor as part of my, my you say, filmic language. Mm -hmm. uh, but also because actually when I've been, have been in the most severe crises in my life, I find that laughter is kind of almost, I mean, if it's, there's so much energy and so much tension in you that sometimes you burst out laughing. I mean, it's, it's not funny, but uh, mm -hmm. so, so in that sense, that's why I wanted that feeling that there was a lightness as well. And then, okay, that's another thing that is, I love karaoke and I love to sing karaoke myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, and at, at one point, actually, which is also a basis of the film, I was at a karaoke bar. Yeah. I was drunk and I was happy. And someone in the crowd said, Hey, Martin, don't you want to sing a song? Oh, yeah. It was the first time I tried it. And three hours later, <laughs> I was still on the <laughs> microphone because I didn't get the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so, that, so that gave me the idea about what if there was this guy and he wants to sing the same song that's both profound wish but it's also kind of comical in a way mm. oh yeah that's <laughs> great but what's your go-to karaoke song man what is your like oh, well i must say that i i really love to sing delilah with my heart out <laughs> Oh, I love it. Was it was yeah. that that time you uh, sang karaoke for three hours? The first time you were doing. What was the first song that was in the lineup of that uh, epic set? That was the one I went and I uh, did. Uh, I want to sing. I want to sing Delilah. <laughs> so yeah. that was the first song there, and that's it. Is is my karaoke it, song? Mm. I love it. Um, have you ever sung on my mind? in karaoke yeah always on my mind yeah yeah i have yeah, yeah. i have uh, while we would while we did the film and i well, put up the karaoke uh, system i uh, i did sing it <laughs> oh very nice did like what why do you choose that song of all the songs for the film well because because uh, it's a song about goodbye mm. it is a song about yeah. saying goodbye to someone and uh, and and all the things, I mean, and that's something you suddenly realize when you have to say goodbye, that there's so much you could have done. So mm. in that sense, that thing can reflect and you can't, I mean, you can, you can say, I'm sorry, I didn't do it, but you couldn't, <laughs> right? Yeah. But that's what kind of stops with you while you're in that process of saying goodbye, all the things you wished you had done and all that, uh, Right, but you have to go through that to cherish what you did do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why I chose that song and oh. also a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it, we're on the carry. This might be a bit of a silly question, Martin, but I was curious as to the uh, man who owned the pub. Uh, I thought he was a, a great fun sort of yes. character and, and foil for our hero uh what, he seemed to really hate karaoke but he he knew the number of the song i was like wondering what was in his backstory to the purchasing of this karaoke machine for the bar right yeah i think he really hates it that's one thing but um uh it's also one of the things that's kind of his thing in the film is that he wants to have a sense of authority. Mm -hmm. He has a very fragile masculinity, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is not a good thing when your bar owner and your <laughs> bartender has to flirt and you get jealous every time she flirts. And that's uh, one of the things, but he also needs to know and needs to say all the time that he knows everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why he knows that. He knows that his bar so well. So also the things that he hates, that's why he has, cheap whiskey even though he wants to sell expensive whiskey as well mm. no, 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 i like that all, all the all the all the characters you got sort of a is well of the very few characters in this film you've got some really lovely sort of little moments with all of them which is which is cool okay thanks um what what is something um martin that uh do you have a favorite shot or favorite scene in the film 
Oh, um, I have a couple of places, of course. Uh, yeah. I really, really, I mean, apart from the, the, the end scene, the dust scenes that I talked about, which is, I mean, yeah. I really enjoy that uh, in a kind of sadistic way when I see it in the audience because I enjoy how I can feel that it goes very deep uh, in their heart and their emotions. But I also like that uh, little subtle moment where he sit with his glass and talk about how human breath is something that can go away. Yeah. Now, this film has been uh, shortlisted for the Academy Awards uh, for the best live action short film category martin and you are no stranger from this category at the oscars having won back in 2003 for this charming yeah. man what does um the oscar recognition uh mean to you well i mean right now with this i mean amazing <laughs> to experience that uh, as a as a young filmmaker and uh, giving that push, which it is as well. Uh, but I remember but this time, I mean, I'm like, I am a mature filmmaker and I've done a film which in a way, and even more so, I mean, of course, this is a private uh, story in that sense, it's very personal to, it, to me. So uh, that it goes all the way to, to hear the semifinals of the Superliga. Mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, I mean I can, and I we did this uh, like because there was a Corona, right? So all the bars are closed. Uh, hey, we can have a bar for free. We can film on a bar for free because <laughs> bars are closed. You have a Corona. Yeah, let's do that. And <laughs> so I wrote the script for it, and then um, got the bar. And 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 being able to also use that the creative outlet as the Corona did, and to tell this story, and then suddenly be here is amazing of course mm. yeah where where is your oscar from 03 <laughs> well uh actually I'm, I'm i'm glad you asked because um, a couple of weeks ago i was like where's my oscar but <laughs> because i have it i have it uh in a in a in a in the back uh, at home and i was like oh yeah but uh why didn't I put it out when I moved into this new uh, room? <laughs> Whatever. Mm. So uh, I have found it uh, right now. It is on a speaker at home. Ah, very nice, very nice. And um, what 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 does it mean to uh, be an Oscar winner? To you? Mm, what does it mean to? I mean, what does it mean to be an Oscar winner? It means that you. That it means that your film is being, I mean, so much more out there in the world. Uh, and, for, and that is basically the most important thing about this, that people get to see your film, which is basically why I did it. Not to mm -hmm. get an Oscar, but to tell a story to an audience. And mm -hmm. this might help, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I think... Um... Um, the, the Academy Awards um, do a really nice job of showcasing short films um, and, and short filmmaking. Uh, you've obviously been involved in short filmmaking for a number of years. What do you think the power is in short films? Oh, wow. But the, the short film is, I think, a fantastic format because, I mean, it's like instead of showing an entire tree, you can go in and just look at one leaf and see the, the details and all that life that is, and that represents the entire tree, well, while the tree is the, uh, is the feature. And I think that the short film has something that sometimes can be very, very, uh, can say something about uh, human existence uh, on a very profound level because it is simplistic in this way. Uh, mm -hmm. The simplicity actually adds depth Mm. Uh, so the the best short films I know are the ones that are. This is a short film. It starts here, it ends here, and you wish you could have seen a little more, but you you I won't let you. Mm. Um, so uh, so that's why I I love that format. Mm. 
what do, you, you um um said before like the power of uh filmmaking and telling stories and all that sort of thing um was there a particular story or film or something you watched uh, growing up that made you want to get into making films oh yeah i have i mean i think everyone has this magical moment that you go wow this is amazing and for me it was i lived in the countryside uh but every every once every month there came this this film club to the uh, gymnastics uh, hall what do you call that yeah where to G- gymnasium where and, yeah, yeah yeah right and all our kids all of us kids we were set there and got to see old 16 millimeters in that room and i remember i was around eight maybe nine and they showed Robin Hood from 1936 with Errol <laughs> Flynn. And uh, I remember before I went, my mom had said to me, if it's scary, uh, remember that it's only a film, it's not real. Okay, I went in there and it was scary, and it was exciting. And at one point there was this, there was these uh, riders coming on a horseback. And I, I think it was Robin Hood, he took his bow and arrow and just, and one of the, uh, Knights that came, got this arrow going, and he fell off. And I was like, oh, but they didn't do that. How did they do it if he didn't die for real? And I, so that thing about, because I saw it and someone told me it wasn't real. So that kind of gave me the, uh, that fascination of the illusion that film is, the magic. Ah, mm. oh, yeah, very nice. And, uh, Thinking about sort of uh, the magic of filmmaking um, and, and telling stories to an audience, what is something that you hope audiences take away from um, On My Mind? Well, from On My Mind, um, I hope they take away something about cherishing and that, so, no, something about uh, that, that saying goodbye. It is painful. It is. But there is an, or a, a swell, maybe a glimmer of hope in there because uh, the ones you say goodbye to, in a way, still lives on. If you dare to go back and remember them. Uh, and that's, so there is also, I mean, there's almost a spiritual feeling at the end of the film, also because that's something I remember that rituals became very important for me at that period. And there was a feeling that everything had a, had a little, yeah, again, I, want to, as I, I was about to say magic, but everything was spiritual in a way. You can feel the world mm. very clearly when you're in sorrow, actually. Uh, so, so, uh, so in that sense, that's something I wanted to have across this film. Mm. And did you learn anything about yourself for making it? Sorry? Did you learn anything about yourself from making it? I learned that I was like, because I also did a lot of the producing and Mm. because we had such a small team Mm. because of Corona, right? So we couldn't be a team. We were six crew members on set and three actors, right? So the tiniest team you could imagine, which meant that production design, um, script, all that, I had to do and I remember going what did I do before when I was only a director <laughs> yeah. uh, because I, but I, I did learn about the importance about uh, budgeting yeah which I didn't I wasn't good at before and what things cost yeah, yeah. so that was good <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, you would have found out uh, like your music rights and stuff. All yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like, sorry. I had to... <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> well, let's... Uh, well, I'm, let... I'm allowed to, to swear, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Barton, thanks so much for talking with us today. People watching this interview can go to goldderby.com where you can make your own awards predictions and join the discussion in our forums, watch other interviews with the award contenders. And Martin, all the best of luck with the Oscar thanks nominations coming out soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's been a pleasure.